Hey guys, it's Joe from eattheplanet.org. Today I'm going to talk about four different types of thorny brambles. I'm going to show you how to identify them and what the edible parts are. A lot of times you look at the edge of the road or the edge of the woods and you see a mass of vines and thorns. Uh, around here in New England, um, there's typically four different things or five different things that it could be. I'm going to go over four of those and that's going to be the uh, multiflora rose, uh, blackberries and raspberries, which are in the same genus, greenbrier, as well as the shrub, uh, Japanese barberry. So first I'm gonna show you about the edible parts of them, and then I'm gonna talk about how to identify them and distinguish them from each other. So the first thing I'm gonna go over is one of my favorite plants that's often underutilized. Uh, this is greenbrier. Uh, in the springtime, it doesn't look like it, but these thorns are not hardened. They're very soft. Down to uh, about here. So this whole section can be pulled off and eaten in the spring, raw or cooked, and it's got a very good flavor. This is Multiflora Rose. Uh, this is something that I like to refer to as a foraging secret often people don't realize but the new foliage even on the multiflora rose uh, is soft these thorns are not hardened yet till about here so this section this whole section uh, can be pulled off and eaten so I've got the greenbrier and the multiflora rose right there and this right here is a Japanese barberry one edible part of them that's not shown here is that they have edible berries throughout the winter uh, but in the spring, the new growth, before it's hardened, can be eaten. Um, and with this one, uh, there are not thorns underneath the leaves. There are thorns between the leaves. They're very sharp. But if you're careful, you can pick the leaves and eat them throughout the summer. You can't do that with wild rose. Uh, and you can't do that with raspberry or blackberry because the thorns... Uh, go up and down the leaves and they harden off pretty soon uh, in the spring. So from this patch right here you've got wild rose you've got greenbrier and these soft thorns I'm eating them because they, like I said they've not hardened off yet And right here we have Japanese barberry. Those three plants all taste really good. They don't have any uh, bad aftertaste or bitter flavor. So let's start talking about identification. This is Japanese barberry. And one real good identification feature uh, is this leaf shape typical of all the leaves on the plant um, as the leaves mature they get darker like the leaves inside the uh, stem here and these leaves out here are newer foliage and they're brighter green I'll see if I can find some thorns to show you there's a thorn uh, right here you can see it against the green foliage they're hidden in there so they really get you because they're very small and sharp uh, if you're trying to pick foliage off of these you really have to watch out for these small sharp straight thorns and that's another ID features that they're straight thorns um, they're at a little bit of an angle to the stem um, but there's the thorns themselves are straight here's another good example of a thorn right there see it's small and straight thorn this one hasn't quite hardened off yet but it's almost there uh, once they harden off, they're very sharp. This is greenbrier. You can see the tendrils there in greenbrier. Um, good ID feature for this is that it's the only climbing vine that I'm talking about today. So those tendrils grab on it. It can climb up into trees 20 or 25 feet or so. Uh, looking at the stem here, these thorns always look the same. They're straight. Um, they're about 90 degrees off the stem. The stem is pretty bright green even in the winter. Sometimes you'll get sooty mold on the stem which makes it a little darker uh, speckled 
darker colors like gray and black um, but once you memorize the look of this stem and these thorns and the spacing is pretty typical of this plant as well as the fact that it has tendrils all those are good identification features good thing about this one is that the leaves can be eaten all year round because you can easily pick the leaves and avoid the thorns so this is a very good underrated uh, wild edible one thing to note is that the leaves um, will vary in shape a little like this one's more uh, narrower and this one's wider and a lot of times will be even more wider than that sometimes almost circular this is wild rose they have an odd number of leaflets depends on which branch you're looking at it's typically seven but uh, actually this one's got nine it's got two more small ones uh, this one's only got seven this one uh, down here has nine um, but you can see it's always an, an odd number seven or nine um, there's one good identification feature for wild rose versus raspberry that you can even use in the winter and if I could find the thorn I will show you okay here's a good example of a wild rose thorn it's curved a little bit uh, but the good ID feature that you can use versus raspberry and blackberry thorns is that there's this distinctive line between the thorn and the stem it's especially true as they mature sometimes the younger thorns you don't notice that uh, but you can see it looks like this thorn was just stuck on there and the older thorns you can break off um, and they'll leave this this shape that's the shape of the thorn they're a little easier to break off they separate from the stem cleanly relatively cleanly so that's a good ID feature for wild rose here is a wild raspberry right here uh, this particular one has this leaf shape with three leaflets that's um, not always the case for the species it is but different species have different shaped leaves you can see that this species has five leaflets per leaf this one gives me a good opportunity to show you another identification feature which is if you look at the stem not always but a lot of times uh, plants in the rubus genus like blackberries and raspberries uh, will have these ridges down the stem uh, this one's got five so if you were to cut the stem um, it would look kind of like a pentagon um, even on the larger stem sometimes the stems can be more round uh, but this one really uh, shows that identification feature you can sort of see here that it's not completely round and sometimes that'll transfer over to the larger stems although this stem uh, the larger part of this stem tends to be pretty round uh, you can use these leaves the young leaves and the old leaves for tea um, they're not terrible if you eat them raw but uh, they're a little bit bitter one identification feature um, for this plant is that the thorns do not have that distinction between the stem and the thorn although these have uh, light colored tips to the thorns there isn't that distinction between the stem as clearly and these are these thorns pretty much go straight out some of them are curved a little bit you can see one over here that's curved a little bit um, but you don't get that clear distinction like you do on the rose shrub plus all these uh, raspberry leaves look pretty different than rose uh, ras all these raspberry and blackberry leaves look pretty different than rose unless it's early in the year when they're small and then they could you could uh, make a confusion there so we've gone over the difference between wild rose blackberry and raspberry which are the same I didn't go over the differences between those but those are the same genus um, Japanese barberry and greenbrier so hopefully you liked the video um, if you did please like and subscribe and post any questions in the comments thanks for watching